Welcome to another monthly meeting. Pass and crash is what we're talking about today. Um, kind of fun for me because it's pass and crash is a lot like um, block charge, right? I mean, really what it is, is it's a charge, but they just got rid of the ball. So we have to understand not just legal guarding position and um, whether the, the dribbler made the contact, but who is going to call it? What? How do we get that coverage to make sure we get the, the call right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna go ahead and get started right with our first video. All right, I'm gonna play it again. The center calls the foul. Happens at the top of the lane, kind of. First of all, what do you think about the foul? I didn't slow it down to watch it again, but right here is our ball currently, which is in which area? Whose primary coverage area is this? C slot. C. Uh -huh. That's right. So center is watching the ball because the ball is in the center's primary coverage area. Yes? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. What is the lead watching? Well, he looks at his head to the right right now, but okay, he's what, looking underneath. What should the lead be watching? <laughs> the ball coming at him. Well, he's got his area, right? That matchup on the right side of the, of the uh, lane, his right side, our left. He's got the two guys you know, kind of up near the three-point line. But so he's watching, for the most part, the lane. Do we agree? Yes, sir. Yeah. The matchup and then that, that little straggler over there, that's who he's watching <laughs> because that is a possible um, matchup that will come if that ball continues down the lane, which it does. And as it continues down the lane, right before the crash, we'll stop it here. Still in the center's area, Yes. Yes. So the yes. center is still yes. watching it, right? Yes. Okay, but he's passing the ball, as I've marked out here, and he's passing it over here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. So the lead can't just ignore the ball, can he? He has to follow the ball, does he not? Yes, correct. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean he has to completely put 100% focus on that player. We can see multiple players over uh, the floor at the same time. But primarily, when the ball is in your primary coverage area, you need to watch the ball and whoever has that ball, whether it's a matchup or a single player, right? So that means he doesn't have 100% focus. Who is going to be able to pick this up, though, as that ball is being passed? The C. The, the, the C is, is watching the ball. The lead, right. the lead, who looks like he's starting to transition over, to rotate over, he's already watching in the lane, so he already knows that secondary defender, as we had mentioned before. He already has been watching him, so he knows and sees this crash coming the whole way. I, it's not the lead's area. Nope. But he has to help with that because – the center can't put a hundred percent focus on that. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is a tough situation because the ball is in the center's area, right? And the crash happens in the center and the pass goes to the center. The center can't see it all because it's all his area, but he just can't see it all. So he shouldn't be expected to make this call, which he does. And he does a nice job. He gets it right. But the lead can come and get this. Now, the Federation has the official's manual. For those of you who are Illinois officials, we don't get, I don't know, maybe other, maybe other um, states don't either, but we don't get an official's manual. They don't send it to us. In fact, we don't really follow 100% the way the official's manual is. There's a few differences, and that's why we don't get them. But the official's manual says on a pass and crash, they have a rule. 
if the crash happens, doesn't matter where the crash happens, but if the crash happens and the ball is passed to the weak side, and when we say the weak side, do you know what that means? Does everyone know what the weak side is? Yeah. Less players, right? The weak side. That is where the other one official is. Center side. <clears throat> one official on that side. So that's the weakest side. There's two officials on the other side, the lead in the trail. That's the strongest side. So strong side, weak side. So if the ball is passed to the weak side, the center who is on the weak side will take the pass. If the ball is passed to the strong side, the trail who is on the strong side will take the pass. In both of those instances, the lead takes the crash. Okay, so that's the formula that the book comes up. They say lead takes the crash, center takes um, the pass, or the trail takes the pass, depending on which side the ball is passed. For the most part, in my opinion, that covers about everything. But there are some instances where it doesn't necessarily, in my opinion, follow that formula. But if you can remember a crash taken by the lead, the pass taken by one of the others. Everyone got that? Okay. All right. Yeah. But not the, I mean, that's the rule in the book, but general rule of thumb, if you can remember that. Let's do the next video. Any questions on that last video? Well, I got a question for you on yeah. that last, on that last video. Looks like the uh, lead was rotating late. So C had all that, all that by himself, basically. I mean, I see the lead coming over, but he's moving over late. So he's moving while the play's being made. So, the C actually has the crash and the pass. He possibly, well, now he's there. I see it. All right. So, so you know what I'm saying? Okay. But look, look, the ball is at the top of the key and there are three, four players in the leads area now. And there's only one, maybe two players. There's not even one. So there's one player in the trails centers area right now. So the Correct. lead has no reason to, tr to rotate right now. The lead Agreed. is, they're in a closed down position. Agreed. Okay. And then as all the players are moving over, you can see now the lead's like, oh, wait, I need to maybe get over there. So I don't think there's any problem with that. He's not over there. And I'm not sure if that's what you were saying, but no. um, when, the, when the crash happens, that's a lot of players in the center's area. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's so it. it's, it's unfair to say, the center is going to get that, even though it happens totally in his area, right in the, the middle of his area. It's unfair to say that he's going to get it because he's got a lot of players he's got to watch. That's yeah, my point. Point well taken. My thought on that, uh, Josh, is that's a hard call for the lead because he's kind of flatlined, or at least he might not. Eat, there might not have been contact there because he's coming from underneath the basket how does he make that call the lead yeah well that's a good question and that's why i don't follow the uh formula 100 percent all the time because it does come down to positioning where are you when it happens and if you're straight lined or stacked right. against the the way the play comes it's hard to see i've always liked um the way it was explained to me once where when the ball opens up to you so behind me is the center, and then I, I turn toward the center. Now the center can see it, even though maybe not the center area. Or I turn to the, the trail, and now the trail can get it because I've opened up to the trail. So whoever has that open look can pick that up, especially when it comes into that lane area, which Tim and I argued earlier today that not everybody yeah. should be responsible for the lane, but everyone is responsible for the lane. Obviously, if there's four players outside of the lane in the trails area, they can't watch the lane. But my point is something happens in there. Everyone's always kind of looking in that way, right? Toward the basket. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at the next video and we'll uh, see if we can analyze a little bit further how to handle these. Okay, crash happens um, near the end line under the basket. The lead picks it up. But the crash happened in the center's area. Agreed. Right? 
Yep. Correct. And did you see? I'm going to back it up for the full. Watch the center. Looks like the center wants to make a call here. Ooh, he is going to sell it. That's a good ref. <laughs> right? So the center wants to make a call, but see, see, knows that the, here's there's a double whistle, knows and withholds, which is good. Now, as we said, we're going to go through this. This is the center's area. So the center is watching the ball and the matchup with that ball, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. So he's going to follow that all the way to the basket as it continues, right? The lead is watching the players in the paint and probably the players at the top of the paint as well, even though it's for the most part in the center's area because the center's watching the ball. The lead can cover all of that paint. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. And now yeah. as a side note, I didn't mark this out, I don't think, but the center also needs to be aware of the two players to his right. He can't just discount those players because that could become a matchup too or a pass or something. So he just needs to be aware and have a secondary focus there. As this play progresses, he's going to stay with the ball, right? And the lead stays with the guys in the paint. And it's still the center's area. But who's watching this play as it develops into a crash? Who's watching it? The lead. The lead and the center. You got two officials watching this play, and rightfully so. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is because it's not, it's not wrong, because look how many players are in the paint. So it's better to have two eyes on there than one. I agree. I think it is okay that we have two eyes on this play. Four eyes. But where is the ball passed to? <laughs> yeah, four eyes. Sorry. <laughs> two officials on this play. The strong side. The, it's it's passing the strong side. So as the book okay. tells us, the trail has to pick up that pass, and the lead picks up the crash, right? That's what the book tells us. But so does that mean we're just absolving the center of any kind of responsibility? No. I don't think so. No. I think the lead has a way better chance at watching this ball. It's in his area. The trail could come in and help. And the trail can give assistance if the lead has nothing or needs help with what happened with the ball. But the lead is right there. And since the center has that play from beginning to develop to finish, I think the center should take this call. Now, I know it doesn't go with what the, what the book says, what we just said to do, but that makes the most sense to me. What do you guys think? Yes. Yeah, I agree. It's, a, it's right. It's real close to the line either way. To me, it doesn't matter as long as it got called because, look, it's really close to the line anyway. So if you want to go by foot or two, what it happens? Yeah, but it's but it's a dribble drive, okay. Our dribble drive that center's watching his. It came out of his area, so the center has. That's all he's looking at, right? <laughs> the guy driving into the basket. Right. Okay. And and if you uh, would remember, uh, not that I said it today, but when the ball starts um, in your area and it drives to the basket you're supposed to take that drive all the way to the basket now this one didn't cross over another coverage area but even if it crosses in another coverage area they say you're supposed to stay with it all the way my point is <clears throat> the center had it from the beginning of the play as it goes into the play as it crashes into the play the ball goes out of his primary he doesn't need to worry about that i'm not saying don't know what happened to the ball but that's in someone else's primary and and then the lead or who's ever primary should pick that up and the center is going to stay with that play. And so the center is going to have the best chance. And I agree with you, Art, with what you were saying is, <coughs> does it matter that the lead got this? No, we got the call, right? That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not saying how dare you take that call you lead. No, it, he got it, but it should be just like on a double whistle. When you're reaching into someone else's area, it should be, wait a second let your other official have the opportunity to get it because he's watched the whole thing. Agreed. Okay. So go back to the screen. I got a question to ask. It's got nothing to do with what you said. It's just what, what I've been told. So just go back to where they're just before they're ready to crash. I'll tell you when to stop. I'll tell you when to stop. Keep going. Keep going. 
Oh, stop right there. Stop. So I've been told the center, you should walk toward the three point line instead of just standing there. The closer you get, the better. So wouldn't you be better to go toward the play and walk like to the three point line, maybe your foot or two in to get closer to the play or no standing still like that is fine. I, I, I'm just what I've been told that, you know, you sometimes mean, you want to walk, you get a closer view than just staying way out far, out far you, like that. You mean while the play is going on or when you make the call? I'm, I'm talking about like, all right, you see, you see the guy make an attempt to go to the basket, right? He gets so close to the paint right now. Look at all that room that between the center and where the play is. So as the guy's going in and there's nobody around him, the play is going to develop and stay and stop right there where it's at. If the center walks toward the three-point line, maybe into the red line, that way you get a better look, a closer view. I don't disagree with that. Uh, uh, yes, it's always better to stay with the play, but watch this. Just play this out real quick. Watch. One, two, two seconds. Two seconds, and he crashed into the lane. Is that enough to process that the ball is going into the lane? I better move in and stay with it. I don't. I mean, some guys might be that quick. For me, I'm going to watch it. And if now I agree, if I'm going to blow my whistle, instead of move. look where he's going, instead of going away from the play, he should be going toward the play. Yeah, like I'm saying walk toward the play until the three point line yeah. as he passes you. And you see, it's going to, it's going to end up being right where it's at anyway. So the closer you get, the better off to get a better look. Right now. That's just, now, during the play, too, be aware that you've got two players at the three-point right. line to your right. And if you come in right. too far and that crash doesn't happen and another another defender gets in the way of, of the, the player that just got the ball and they kick it out to the three-point line because maybe that's a player or whatever, and now you've put you know, yourself in a true. terrible position to see You're that right. play. So you have to know where your players are in your area. Yeah, I, I think, didn't think about the one on the right, so that's good. You're right. General rule of thumb, are you, you want to move – two, maybe three steps closer if you can. Um, and I, I know me personally, I, I tend to find myself always further away from the play. I don't know why I do it. I feel like I can see better. But when I watch video, I'm like, wow, I'm so far away from the play. So, yeah, Yeesh. find two, three steps forward because the closer you are, you may not – you don't want to be too close where you, you, know, you close your vision, but when you blow your whistle – Holy cow, that guy was right on top of it. He, he got it. Okay. All right. Mike uh, chatted secondary defender. Lead takes a secondary defender typically. I'm going to give my speech. <laughs> nowhere in the official's manual, nowhere, does it mention secondary defender. Secondary defenders are not mentioned if the foul or the play happens in your primary area, that official takes it. They don't talk about it. Now, I'm not saying it's not important to know about secondary defenders and how do we pick it up. I agree with you. The lead is typically in the lane going to get the secondary defenders because if we're watching our primary area and the ball's up here, we're not watching that other defender, the secondary defender, and what they're doing. So, yes, the lead will typically pick that up. I don't like using the terminology because it's not in the book. The NFH, NFHS doesn't use it. I'm slowly coming that way. <laughs> but I try to use the terminology that the NFHS uses. So uh, does that help, uh, Mike? At least um, yeah, it, it does. It does. But we've been taught rather than getting closer to play is to take a, a lateral step to keep that to keep that vision between defender and dribbler. So we really don't want it here. We're completely straight lined as the center, um, the center official on that contact on the defender. We really lose sight of that secondary defender. And again, I pardon my expression, but not the guy who rode him down into the lane. We lose track of the guy who was either established in legal guarding position or not. We don't know because we're looking through the back of the defender through to the, you know, I mean, through the back of the dribbler through to the defender. So the, um, as a lead, and when I see that defender set up, I might actually jump across and try to get on the other side of the basket line if I can if I can get ahead of the play so I can see that gap in between. Which I think is why, and I don't know why the, the NFHS, maybe they will eventually pick up the secondary defender terminology. Um, but I think that's why they have the pass and crash um, 
philosophy or ruling of the lead takes it because usually the crash happens with the secondary defender. And so the lead usually is going to know the legality of that better than the primary. So um, that would make sense as to why that is. Let's play our next video. All right, no question as to whether this is a block or a charge, right? <laughs> How do we watch this play? So the ball starts where? Who's, whose area is that? Trail. Trail. Correct. Trail, because the trail goes all the way to the other end of the lane. So the trail is watching this play from the ball matchup. And as it drives into the basket, the trail... The trail is going to stay with that play. Why does the trail stay with that play? It went into the leads area. He said it started from the, from the beginning of the play to the end. That's what he said in the last Correct. Video. So right. if, if the yeah, drive, <laughs> good. If there is a drive to the basket, wherever yeah. the drive starts from, which was the trail, they're supposed to stay with that play all the way to the basket. Why? So you see it start, develop, and finish. That's the reasoning behind it. So you've seen the whole play and know exactly what happened. Heaven forbid the player gives a little shove that you passed on. You thought it was marginal enough. And then the other player shoves back, which then is possibly also marginal, but the lead maybe only saw the second shove and gets the foul. And now you feel like, you know, that's the reason why we try to let the originating official take it all the way to the basket. But here they drive into the basket and then the ball is passed out to the man on the three point line back into whose area trail trail, right? So the trail has to watch that play. Now look, I mean, you can even see on here, where is the, the trail looking right now? Ball. He's looking where he should be right at the ball, right? Because if, if, if this play, let's go back just a little bit. If this play ends up where the passer completely stops, and it's possible he stops, and then there is no crash, but the lead, uh, the trail continues to watch that play, and then number three here in the, in the corner puts up a three-point shot, but we don't know if he's on the line or not. How can you rule if it's a three-point shot or not? Right? So you have to stay with the ball which means obviously the lead is going to come and get this. This is a textbook uh, pass and crash coverage by these officials. Okay, the ball went to the strong side. The trail stayed with the pass. The lead picked up the crash. This is going to be your probably 80% of the time. This is going to be your pass and crash scenario. You start, you go into the lane, you crash in the lane, and the ball is dished out one side or the other. I would say maybe 90% of the time, that's the way it's going to happen. <laughs> that's why they say, let the lead take it. Because the lead, even though we split that in half, but the center gets half and the lead gets half, the lead is really officiating that whole lane. Are they not? So the lead's going to have the best um, information on whether that is illegal or not. And again, we talked a little bit about the secondary defenders, but the lead is going to know who, if someone jumped in the way or stood in the way or, or was waiting for that, you know, for three steps, they're going to have the best information on that. That one's pretty clear cut. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, absolutely. On, on both of these plays, I'm noticing that we're not seeing the stop the clock signal. Yeah. First. We're just seeing, we're seeing, um, you know, the uh, sort of the more, the older style, the old fashioned right. style, just go straight to the player control, go straight to that direction. All right. You didn't stop the clock. Let's see. No, there it is. It was a there quick stop the clock. 
Yeah, All right. I, I, I missed it the first time. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Not a textbook post, but he put it up. <laughs> got to give credit where credit is due. I'll let it play it again and then let it play out. All right, so the lead picked this up by by rule as they're supposed to, but it's not in the leads area again, right? Right. So let's see, how do we watch this? The ball starts up here at the trail. Yes? Right. All right, so the trail's watching the ball in the matchup, and the as the ball goes into the lane, I'm sorry, we got the lead here too, I forgot the lead is watching these players at the bottom uh, of the of the floor on the end line because they're in his area and those are they're they're matching themselves up so we have to be aware of what's going on the center has got these two guys right and he's probably going to watch or have a secondary focus on the players in the paint on his side as well as the ball progresses in everyone's kind of following that play because the center, yes, he's got to focus on the, the players uh, in his area there, but it comes into the center's area. He's got to at least be aware that it's coming in, even though the trail is doing what with that play? Watching. Drive, drive to the basket. Drive, drive to, the, to basket. the basket. Yeah, so if it's a drive to the basket, the trail does what? Follows, uh, the ball. follows, the, follows, follows it, it in. in. Correct. The center is going to pick it up because it's coming into his area, right? The lead mm -hmm. is going to start looking at that play. Why? Because it's in the paint. <laughs> because that secondary defender, that <laughs> secondary defender, see, look, they split apart. And he's like, okay, we as officials are can be aware of those players there without watching them, right? And if you can't, you need to work on that because we need to be aware we have a, need a court awareness that these players are here. And as the ball is coming down, holy cow, that ball's coming down to these guys over here. That I need to make sure I know what's going on as it comes down. So you have an awareness. Now, as the crash happens, you've kind of seen it. You know that these two players in front of you are now doing nothing. They're kind of watching the play as well. So you don't have to put your 100% focus on that. You can be aware of everything else coming in. So with the lead, they're aware that, it's coming down toward them. Yes, it's in the center's area, but they're following the play. All right, so they're all following. So basically we've got a triple whistle situation. So since possibly. it's, go ahead. I just say possibly, you're right. Well, look at their eyes. Looks like all three of them, when it gets down toward the crash, all three are looking at the play. Watch the watch the face on all of them. Looks like they're right. right there. That's right. And I think even though we shouldn't be ball watching, right? We should be disciplined to know to watch our area and only our area. In this situation, they should all be watching that area. That is the action. That is where knowing that our players, the lead to the to the right of the lead, those two players, look at the players. They're all watching it too. They know that. They don't have to worry about those kids getting into, into trouble. Now. If you had the two in the post that have been banging all night, you might want to continue to watch them because you know they might, you know, get into it. But they're all watching this area. So the ball now gets past which direction? Weak side. Back where the center, front of the center. Right. And the, the weak, center weak side, side is called? The weak. weak. Weak side. Now, again, by book, when the ball is past weak side, who takes the pass? Center. Center because he's on the weak side. And that makes sense because it's in his area. Typically, when the ball is passed to the weak side, it's in the center's area. So they're going to take the ball. Who's going to take the crash then? The center can't take the ball and the crash. Lead. The lead's going to get it. The most logical uh, official to take that play is the lead. Now, the trail, because they were following the play all the way into the basket, once that ball is released, there's no drive to the basket anymore. So they can release off of that play. And the trail's going to kind of just watch everything. The trail's back far enough. They can kind of get a sense of everything. But if there is a crash and the center has nothing because the center's watching the ball and the lead has nothing, maybe because he's watching the post players on his side because they're banging each other, 
the trail can totally come in and get this play as well. Do we agree with that? Mm -hmm. The trail's probably the last one to get it, but it doesn't mean he can't get it. But again, the lead appropriately picks it up and calls the foul. All right. Those are, the, break. those are the only ones I marked up. I got a few more that I didn't that I don't have marked up, but I'm gonna play them anyway so we can watch. We have no whistle on this play. And that looks more like a crash and pass as opposed to a pass and crash. Wow, he hit him hard. We need a whistle on this play. Yeah. Okay, now, again, I don't have this marked out, but who is watching the ball? <laughs> Whose area is, in, is it in right now? Trail. 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 Trail, correct. And then the ball progresses forward. Come on. Crosses into the lead and it's right at that cross section right so yeah. it's a drive to the basket so who's going to continue to watch this play trail trail okay but who trail. also is going to pick this up lead. see the, the lead center has such a great angle though yeah all right we haven't yeah. got to this we haven't got to the center yet the lead the lead <laughs> is going right. to pick this up because who's the lead watching right now nobody, down. <laughs> nobody he's got those down. two players in the paint Correct? Not, yeah. So he knows that those secondary defenders, he knows their legality and where they are and how long they've been there, right? So he's watching that. So he's going to be watching this play coming in. And then now, I don't know who said this initially. I thought it was Mike, but the center, who's the center watching? At the well, free throw line. The watching, center's got nobody. Or Yeah, he's got – Right, because the guy at the free throw line is the the guy at the free throw line is the trail. That's not center. And that's legal guarding position. Right. So he's watching 24 and who's ever sent in the corner over there. So he's watching nothing. He's got nothing to watch. He's looking directly through the free throw line. Right. He's got no matchups. And if he, right. And if he's a good enough official, he knows that this ball is coming his way. He sees the ball coming his way. He's ready for this action. I think the best official to get this particular play is the center. Correct. There's nobody in his way. There's no way. He's not stacked whatsoever. He sees the exact play as it happens. He's got nothing else to watch. The center. Well, if, if, if you look at the lead, he's got all those people in front of him, so he can't see the hit. The trail's no. got people there. He can't see it. The center is the only one that's got a clear view. Agreed. Look where this action is happening. Right where the lead, the center, and the trail <coughs> all intersect their coverages. Right? Yeah, you guys. Mm-hmm. That can be anybody. Anybody can come get that. Now, again, the center's got the best look at it. I think the center comes in, blows this whistle, and sells it. Block, charge, whatever you got. I mean, hopefully he gets a player control. But whatever you got, strong whistle, strong signal, everyone's going to believe you because you're right there. That's all you've watched. Well, that's why they say, right, if you got a good – if you're working a good crew and you got a good C, and the, the C can save you. Because, like you said, that's 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 his, he can see it. He better call that, right? And if you come in late – Fine, come in late. You waited for your partners. They got nothing. You got it. Did, it did anybody call? make that call or no? Was there there no was call? no whistle on that. Nothing. Play. No whistle, huh? Here's another one. Ah! Oh. No whistle on the play. Well, an out-of-bounds whistle, but nothing on that action there. Man. Oof. He got it nailed. You would say, watching that video, holy cow, how do we not get that? Well, there's lots of factors in a game that would cause you to maybe be, I don't know, be shy to get it. Maybe, not saying it's right or wrong, maybe the fouls are seven to one. And you go, do I want to get another one to make it eight to one, right? Maybe that kid just barreled through the last three players. And you're, I don't know, who knows what's going through our minds. But 
that kind of contact, regardless of the situation, I think we need to get. If it's an eight to one or the kid did three in a row or or you just teed up on a coach and you want to that contact, I think we've got to get regardless of the situation. That was large enough of the con. Do we agree? He ran him over. You got to agree. You have to call that. We got to get that. And just because he loses the ball and then runs into the player doesn't absolve him of the contact, right? Right. Easy one, right? Yeah. Oh, look at that rough right on it. Man, Did that geez. not look like the last play? I mean, basically, it was the same thing. Lead got it. But this time there was a travel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is my YouTube game I, I pulled on the COVID year when I wasn't working. And now into the hands of Sean Black. Wouldn't Uh-oh. be surprised if he pulls up right here. 11 point lead for Warren inside Tate Davis as he is. Now there's no whistle on the crash. There's a whistle on something else. All right, now he's an airborne player. So that changes things, right? Because when a player goes airborne, what can we now not do as a defender? You can't move into his path anymore. Correct. You cannot move into his path, not legally at least, because that airborne player has absolutely no way to change the, his direction. So the here's the defender's frame here, as we can see. What does he do? He slid over into that Airborne player's path, correct? Yeah. Right. That means that is no longer a legal defender. So when that crash happens, that should be a block. And that is not a pass because he passed it to his teammate and let's let him score. He ran that kid over. That kid put him in the position. It's a block. I don't think we should pass on that. That's contact. In my opinion, there's some certain amounts of contact in certain games that you can't really make that judgment on. Cause if you wait a second and the kids on the ground and then that kid misses the two points for whatever reason, now they're all upset because you, why didn't you call that? It just ran that kid over. Right. 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 Yeah, and it's not soccer. We don't have the advantage call. <laughs> kind of like um, when the kid takes a three point shot, you know, if you go up for a layup and the kid hits him on his hand and the ball goes in, we can call nothing, right? Because the ball went in, we play on. But if the kid shoots a three-point shot, gets hit on the hand, you can't wait to see if that ball travels another two seconds to the bucket. Oh, we missed it? Fine, I got a foul. Like, you got to get that one right away. Is that a good analogy or no? <laughs> Not bad. All right. All right, the trail got this play. First of all, did you see it? Do we agree with the call, block or charge? Charge. 100% of charge. Look, he's standing there waiting. Okay, he's not an airborne player. Okay, 100% of charge. The lead, it's totally in the leads area. Right? Yep. By the book in the NFHS, the lead is supposed to take this call. Right? Correct. But where did they pass it to? Whose area, whose area is that pass going to? In the leads. The leads. Shouldn't the lead stay with the ball? He's he's yeah. got a competitive uh, matchup. Yeah, what if what he's if that what if that crash doesn't happen? What if he stops on a dime and passes it? What if the defender moves out of the way? I know these are all improbable, but what if it happens then? And plus it starts, look, it starts in the trail. So the trail is following it the whole way. But if that crash doesn't happen and then he gets fouled going up here and the lead is watching the crash, now we've just missed another foul, a shooting foul possibly. So I think, again, the way the book is written doesn't 
doesn't cover this type of a situation. The trail has to get the crash on this because the lead has to stay with the ball. Do we agree with that or no? Yes. Yeah. Develop an end. That's not to say the lead can't get it. If the lead sees it and the lead knows, the lead can get it. But I just think the lead's focus has got to stay with the ball, so the trail's going to stay with that crash. And that's what's what makes the most sense, and that's what happened. The trail got it. Any questions on that one? No. What? Good, good get. Yeah, that, that's a good official on that game. <laughs> They got a block call on the play from the center. Good, good. This must be an old game. There's no masks on any of these officials. Oh, my God. That kid stood there and just waited for the contact to happen. That's a PC. Okay, that's a player control. There's no question in my mind that is a player control. Why did the center have a block? Good, good. He must have come to it late. The center didn't know where that defender came from or how long he was there because he was following. Let's go back here. Pause it. He's, it starts in the center's area, right? He's following the action all the way down. By the time he gets to here, he's not sure where that defender came from. Then where is the ball passed? To strong uh, weak side. In this weak side, in the center's area. If the center were stay with the ball, the lead, I'm assuming the lead will come up with a foul, but the lead will come and get this. And the lead should know, right? Because the lead, what's the lead watching right now? Guys in the paint. For the yeah. most part, the guys in the paint. He knows where this guy, he knows he's been standing there waiting. He knows the ball is coming, even though the ball's not in his area. He knows it's coming. He's got court awareness. So when that crash happens, the lead has the best information as to what happened. He, Josh, look at him again, though. He actually looks like he's looking at the uh, number 22 and number 13. Watch his head. Watch his head and his eyes. He doesn't see he's it. He's not watching the ball. He's watching, like Tim said. He's watching paint. those guys in the post, Josh. Look at his right head. Right there. Watch, look at his eye, look at his head. You look at his head. He's watching, yeah, like Art said, he's watching. <laughs> he's watching the guys on the block. You're right. Can you watch these right. guys right here and kind of have an awareness of that guy there? Yeah, he should. You should the, be able to. Now, yeah, you may not have 100%. Oh, I watched him the whole time. He was standing there for three seconds. I get that. Yeah. He was watching this different matchup, but he has a better sense as to that guy's legality than the center does who's actually watching – when you've got a matchup driving to the lane, you got to watch that because there could be a reach. There could be a bump. There could be right. Anything you can't really give a secondary focus anywhere because that matchup is with the ball. Like that takes the most importance on the whole floor. When you are watching a different matchup without the ball, you can also kind of watch that area. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got to open up like that. Totally agree. So anyway, I, I didn't, I did talk to the official. I don't remember what we, this was like from five years ago. I don't remember why he said, but he did watch it later. And he said, yeah, I probably should have called a charge, but for this, this, and this, I think, because again, he was, he wasn't focused on that defender. That's what happens. It's so difficult as a crew, when you only focus on your, your area, when you need to also recognize when the center's got his hands full, because in that particular play, you see most of the players of the offense are all on the center side of the basket. So he's got a crowd over there. So if you can feel that, if you can kind of feel that pressure, you can recognize that maybe your focus should also be on the center side of the basket line. That's a great, great point. Court yep. awareness of where the ball is, of where the players are, but court awareness we have to have of where our partners are and what our partners are watching. Because our partners may be watching something leaves half of their primary coverage area with four guys in it maybe. So we need to be able to, cover their area because we know they're not watching it we have to know what our partners are watching and not watching and not necessarily look right at them and see where their eyes are but just have that sense of what's happening that's a great point 
Here's one more flat passing crash. Okay, now yeah. there's a whistle, but I don't think it's on the crash. No, it is on the crash. It's got to be on the crash. There it is. Yeah. There it is. And he signals, right? So the play comes down as we watch. And it's in what whose area right now? Trail, trail, trail all day. Trail. And there's a drive to the basket. So <laughs> who's watching it all the way to the basket? Trail. Okay, but then the ball is passed, right? Where is it passed to? Which side? Strong side. Strong side. This is a textbook play where the strong side, even though it's in the lead, the crash happens in the lead. So the lead is going to stay with the crash as the trail picks up the pass. And this is exactly what happened. And the trail's got it and doesn't even flinch. It, he's, he, you know, it's like this is an easy one. And it was an easy one. Very good. All right, so the yeah. takeaway the takeaway of the passing crash really is, for the most part, 80 to maybe 90% of the time, where your crashes are going to happen in the lane and they're going to dish out to the side, the lead's going to take that crash, right? I know we, sh we showed the one video where it doesn't always happen that way. So we do need to be aware of where the ball's going, where the ball's coming from, where our partners are, what they're watching. We always have to be aware because it's not just going to be a quick cookie cutter, boom, you got it. No, hey, why didn't you blow your whistle? You're supposed to take that, right? There's other areas that we have to watch. So hopefully that was helpful when it comes to pass and crash. So when you see your next pass and crash and your partner calls it when you're supposed to, you can tell them, you need to go on the Officials Institute. Institute. <laughs> watch this meeting on pass and crash. <laughs> All right, I want to play... This is what I'm going to end with. <laughs> I got a couple, just a couple. For those of you that know me well, I don't like the fact that at least here in Illinois, we have been told for 30 years, well, 25, I've been doing this for about 25 in Illinois, for about 25 years, to blow your whistle at the end of the quarter. The quarter doesn't end until you blow your whistle. Yeah, that is, yeah. That is nowhere absolutely nowhere in the rules book or the official's manual. That is not a thing. We don't need to blow our whistle. We can blow our whistle if the ball is going to be good or no good, and you need to draw attention to yourself and make a signal. That's great. But in most instances, the game ends when the horn sounds, and if there's actually <laughs> light around the backboard when the light shows. So we don't need a whistle. We don't need it. You can do it if you want to, but it's not needed. So I have a few clips. Uh. <laughs> which just show why a whistle's not needed. All right, here's one. Did we need a whistle on that play? Did you see the center come in and give his whistle and make sure everyone knows it's over? Oh boy. We don't uh, I need thought he was, I thought it was for out of bounds. The ball had an out of bounds whistle, and then the center goes, boo tweet, walk Game's over. Did, do we need that? Did everybody in the gym wonder if maybe the game was still going on? <laughs> Obviously not. I'm not making fun of that official. Again, this is what we're told. For the last 20 plus years, I'm going to keep that. You have to have a whistle. So guys are literally. I'll come to a game. I won't blow my whistle because we don't need to. And they'll look at me. I didn't like, turn the heat up. Are you blowing your whistle? Are you blowing your whistle? Are you blowing your whistle? And then they'll blow their whistle because they're so well worried. All right, next video. Now, ignore whether there might be a foul or not. Do we need a whistle on this play? What do you think? Do we need a whistle? I muted everyone. So if you want to talk, you got to unmute yourself. No, no, not a chance. The, well, the horn right. sounds, the ball's in flight. What's the point? The ball's in flight. You might come in and go, oh, no good, no good. But the ball clearly falls short, not even close to going in. Everybody knows the game's over. We don't need a whistle. One more. 
this is one that I was trying to make fun of the situation in a game of mine and it got cut off, but <laughs> watch it anyway. That's right? you, is that you? That's you. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I came and went tweet, 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 tweet. Are you sure the game was over? My hands like three times. I was hoping to get it on video because I wanted to show everyone. <laughs> They cut it off. They, some of these people send their video and they cut it at the whistle. My point is the ball was short. It didn't go in. The horn went off. Everyone knows the game's over. We don't need a whistle. So I would say if you blow your whistle, no one's going to say, how dare you do that? But why blow your whistle? If you don't need to blow it, don't blow it. Don't be bullied by someone else who say you have to blow it. It's not in the rules book. It's not in the official's manual. Nowhere is it found. But don't, not, but don't not blow your whistle. If you need to make a ruling on whether a basket's going to be good or not, good or not. then you need yeah. to blow your whistle because what is the whistle for? The whistle is to draw attention to yourself. Yeah. I have something. You need to look at me so I can tell you what I have. That's what the whistle is for. Right. But Josh, clinics up here in Wisconsin, they want you to blow your whistle. And if you mm -hmm. don't, they're dinging you. And at the clinics, they're telling you to do that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to say yeah. two things, Bob. One, they're wrong. <laughs> I don't care I what any of them say. They are wrong. But two, if you're going to get dinged and they want you to do it, then you got to do it. Just tell them Josh Schroeder said, no, they're wrong. When in Rome, <laughs> do as the Romans do. I, I, I don't really like it, but it's, a, it's the way of the world. You've got to kind of fit in. And if that's what they want you to do, especially if they're going to give you a mark off, then do it. So I'm not saying be a rebel and don't get any postseason games because you refuse to blow your whistle. If that's what you got to do, then do it. All I'm saying is if you don't do it and say a regular season game, I'll bet you nobody notices. Maybe your partner who's waiting for you to blow your whistle and why aren't you blowing your whistle? And oh, I'm going to blow my whistle because you didn't blow it. Right? Nobody else in the gym knows. Right. That's a good, I'm glad you brought that up though. That, don't do it. If that's what they're expecting you to do, then you can do it. But we, Things aren't going to change if we don't slowly provide resistance. <laughs> all right. Do you guys have anything else? That's all I got for you. And again, I, hopefully the pass and crash videos I showed bring a little clarity as to how we should see it, how we should get it right. All right. Uh, next month is February, correct? We're going to talk about incidental contact. Incidental contact. This is a good one because too often we have fouls that are called when there is contact. There's definitely contact, but it's it's not a foul. And even though some of what we'll talk about is not really going to be incidental contact and it'll be, hey, this contact we should ignore. Ultimately, it's incidental, right? If you ignore contact and you don't call it a foul, you are ruling it incidental. When 10 players move around the court in fast nature, contact's going to happen. It's, there's, no, there's no way around it. So you have to determine, as officials, the rules and intent, uh, the intent and the purpose of the rules. Am I going to call that a foul or am I going to let it go? That's what we're going to kind of discuss. All right, February 17, that for Illinois folks, I believe that is right before the regionals start. Um, so hopefully you're not working. Bring a friend, bring the whole state of Connecticut along. Have them sit on a- I will, I will definitely try. I'll get them, I get their attention because we, uh, we our regionals start about that time also. And actually it's good because the reason we do it is Right before postseason starts, let's start talking incidental contact, different kinds of basketball. What should we allow? Because especially when you get to the higher levels of officiating, those kids don't want little fouls. They don't want to boop. Oh, yeah, he barely got you. In the head. No, they want to go to the bucket and they want their two points. So we need to be able to understand what to call and what not to call. Any questions? Hey, hey, Josh. Yes, sir. Okay, <clears throat> I got a video of a game I want to submit. How do I get it to you for, um, from a, a very good ref at Fremd High School? Great, great question. If you've got video 
that you want to share or that you want me to clip. I can't clip everybody's video because, you know, 10 people send it to me on the same day. I just can't get through it. But if you got something, send me the download link. I need the download link. I can't have, uh, if you have a YouTube, um, a YouTube link, I can usually pull that out of YouTube, but I can't pull it from the NFHS. I can't pull it from some special site. So if you can send me the download link, send me a little email. I'm happy to download it, go through it. You can tell me specifically what to look at for, or just to kind of go through it and comb and find out. But, um, you know what, yeah. you know what game I'm talking about. I know I worked a little kid game the other day and art wants to send it to me because I wasn't hustling and <laughs> my signals were terrible. What signals? You only, you didn't you didn't have it. The only one you did was the end of the game. I had some <laughs> signals. They might not have been NFHS approved. <laughs> Thanks Very again good. for coming on, guys. Uh, hopefully it was helpful, and we'll see most of you next month, right? Yes, yes sir. All right. Yeah, I actually have a free evening the rest of the Thursday, so I should be there. Good. Check us um, out on YouTube. A- Remember, subscribe when you watch videos, like the videos, share the videos. We're not going to grow unless you all help to get the word out. And, and, and we're getting there. We're on almost 3,000 subscribers. So I, uh, I, I give you guys most of the credit because it's not me doing it. All right. Have a good evening, guys. All right. See you. All right. Guys. Thanks, Josh. Stay safe out there. Take care, gentlemen. Have a good night.